Welcome everyone to the Virtual Excel Academy. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you are, we're with you too. We're excited today to present another day of the Virtual Excel Academy. We have Robin Keating-Clark who is back again joining us for a lesson on Community Connections, Intro to Restaurants. Our hostesses today are from Paths to Literacy. Hi, Charlotte. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Leanne Grillet. Hello, Hi. everyone. Help. Welcome. Amaya Hannon. And I am Cheryl Kamei Hannon. I'm a professor from Cal State University, Los Angeles. If you all could write in your chat window, who are you? Where are you from? Where are you joining us from today? We would love to hear from you. Please always remember you're welcome to chat with us in that chat window. We encourage it. We want to hear from you. And with that said, Robin, tell us about restaurants. Oh, okay. Well, welcome everybody to class. I'm going to let our chat window blow up with all of everybody saying hello. So if you're a teacher, tell us if you're a teacher. It's kind of fun to see who are our teachers. So let me already say hello. I see Canada, Pittsburgh, Delaware, California, New Hampshire. Um, oh, if you're a TVI, but tell us where you're from too. All right, I see my girl Reese back here from Utah and Hannah. I sent one of my other favorite students a message to say, join me, we're talking about food today. I see Puerto Rico, hello. Oh, Giselle welcome back again. All right, I see everybody coming in. If you've got some O&Ms, let me know if you're an O&M. Did I bring food? I hope you brought food because we are going to be talking about food. And if you came for session one, then you know if you didn't eat before, you probably will want to eat after. And you'll likely want to eat a burger or fast food because we talked about all those great places. Hello, everybody from Georgia, Missouri, Arizona, another friend from Puerto Rico. All right, Nadia, I'm glad to see that you ate lunch, so you are definitely ready to go. Okay, welcome. Oh, we've got Regina, Saskatoon, Canada, Ohio. All right, everybody is here. We have had a great time last session. Just a quick recap. Last session, we talked about different types of restaurants. This time, we are still going to talk about those restaurants, but now we're really going to get into those tips and tricks. So if you are a student, um, just wait one second. I've got a quick announcement for parents, teachers, brailists, grown-ups who are on this call. Today's lesson is, of course, based on the always awesome expanded core curriculum. If you're thinking that it's just one area of the expanded core, then you are mistaken because we have all nine areas represented because we teach the expanded core by infusing all nine areas always at one time. The skills are based off of the Independent Living Skills Assessment, better known as the ILSA, I-L-S-A. And that is one of our ECC assessment tools. I always like to use the ILSA because it really helps me to understand the age and the skill of which we are using for our activities. So if you're a teacher or a grown up who works with our kids, make sure you always reference that. Okay, now for everybody, um, I'm very excited to work with you. We're gonna have some very traditional skills. We're gonna ask our O&Ms who are joining us if they can give us some tips. But I wanna give a little bit of a disclaimer. And a disclaimer means a message. So my message is this lesson is for students who are moderate to typically developing kiddos. And I share that with you because if we had kiddos with multiple impairments, we would use different strategies for success. So this lesson today is all about ideas for kids who are moderate to typically developing kiddos. And if you're a student and wondering, what does that mean? Don't worry, it means it's for you. I also wanna share that I have lived my entire life with somebody with a vision impairment. In case you didn't know, my mom is blind. 
In fact, my mom has never seen me. So I like to tell my mom that I look like Beyonce. So if anybody ever wants to know, what do I look like? I tell my mom, just say, I look like Beyonce. If you can't see me, that is 100% true. If you can, I may look a little lighter than she is. I'm a little shorter and maybe even the wrong race. But nevertheless, if I can get somebody to believe I look like Beyonce, I'm gonna take it. I share that with you because I have lived my entire life literally walking next to somebody who has a cane. Now, although I have some great life experiences, I also have a master's degree in vision rehabilitation therapy. And I had 20 years now as a teacher. I've been a deaf blind teacher. I've worked with kids with typical disabilities everywhere in between. I just wanna share that because you know what? When I talk about some of these things, sometimes I don't talk like a regular teacher, if you haven't noticed. And that's because I've had the great opportunity of learning about our field from the inside, through the eyes of somebody who has a vision impairment, and from the outside as a teacher. I love being here, but I just wanna share that because we're gonna get a little bit super real when we talk about things today. I also wanna give a super great shout out to everybody who said I look just as good or better as our Queen Bee, Beyonce. Thank you. All right, we are ready to get started. Students, if you are ready, Go to your chat window and tell me your favorite fast food restaurant or any restaurant. Go ahead and join. What is your favorite restaurant? I want all of my students to tell me in the chat window. Eddie Rockets, yeah, I see that. Faith Panera, awesome. Waffle Love Hannah, you know we'll have that again soon. Dairy Queen, you know, the lines at the DQ in my neighborhood are so long but I've never eaten there, so I might have to take a chance. Red Robin, I totally agree, love it. All right, so everybody just keep going through so I know you're ready to go. We're gonna get so excited to talk about everything from today. Let's do a quick recap now. Let's start again with learning about our different types of restaurants. Can anybody go into the chat window and tell me what are the different types of restaurants? Oh, Connor, my student Connor's here. He's, he is such a great student and I'm so excited he's here. Okay, tell me, what are some of the categories? Ooh, Cian, Miriam, okay, perfect. I see it coming through fine dining, fast food. Who remembers, what is the restaurant in between casual dining and fast food? Does anybody remember? While you're thinking about that, I wanna to go to Paul, who said that White Castle is his favorite restaurant. Can I just say, uh, what, what? I love White Castles. They're my favorite. There it is, I see it from uh, CN. Casual fast food or fast casual. So our categories of restaurants are casual dining or family dining. We have fast food. We have casual, fast food, or fast casual. Oh, Keen, your name is Keen. I am so sorry. Thank you, Leanne. I have been butchering your name before. So, got it. All right, fast casual. We have the full service restaurant and fine dining, or upscale. And then we have limited service restaurants. So that, those are all of the types of restaurants that we have. Again, I just want to go over them because when somebody says we're going to a restaurant, you automatically need to be thinking, what restaurant, what kind of restaurant are we going to? Is it casual dining or fast or family dining? So that would be like Olive Garden, which I went to last night just to prepare for this lesson, I thought it was important. So I went to Olive Garden last night for dinner. We also have fast food. So McDonald's, Taco Bell, KFC. We have fast casual or casual fast food. Can anybody remember the names of a fast casual restaurant? Who remembers the name of a fast casual restaurant? I'll let you see in the chat window, who can give me some examples of fast casual? 
uh, Josephine at Jason's Deli, um, Panera, yes, Panera for sure, Corner Bakery, um, what about Chipotle? Chipotle, fast casual, fast casual. I would even put Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A goes into fast casual because remember, fast casual has limited table service. Um, fresh ingredients, so it's kind of right there. Um, Liz Marie, as much as I love Red Lobster and Chili's, I would definitely say that that is more of our casual dining, but it is delicious. All right, a full service restaurant, a full service restaurant, very similar to our casual dining because full service means a server comes to your table, you pay for your food at your table, they, they don't bring you your food in a packaging, perfect. Okay, now limited service restaurant. Who can give me an example or tell me, what is a limited service restaurant? Limited service. Any ideas? Who can tell me what limited service is? Um, a food truck would be example. Oh my goodness, Josephina, the moment I said food trucks, you wrote it in the chat window. Our minds are linked together. Um, Hannah, you do not need to have a reservation at limited service restaurants. Um, limited service restaurants might just be uh, a pizza place that's only pizza and you come in and get a pizza slice. Um, a breakfast place, not a Denny's, because remember Denny's is open all day long. Denny's also serves dinner and lunch, but a, a true breakfast place that's only open for breakfast is limited service. Food trucks, limited service, concession stands. You know what, Sanaya? I agree with you. Let's call that a limited service restaurant. And it's a good one if it has nachos. Anybody here a nachos fan? I've been doing some food research to see which place in my neighborhood serves the best nachos. So I've gone to a place called Costa Vida, Cafe Rio, Taco Bell, and I'm going to tell you, I think the true winner is Costa Vida, the sweet pork. It's delicious. So if you haven't thought about having nachos recently, hopefully I gave you an idea to order yourself some nachos. All right, everyone, now let's move forward. And last time we really talked about all of the features of each one of these types of restaurants. But now we're gonna dive a little bit deeper and we're gonna talk about a few things about like the, the special features, how do you order? Before we do that, guess what I am going to tell you is the number one strategy for success in a restaurant. Hmm, I bet you'll never guess. In fact, I'm gonna even let you make some predictions. I want every student to make a prediction what do you think is the number one strategy, the most important thing you can do to be successful in a restaurant, any type? What do you think is the most important thing? Make a prediction and tell me in the chat window. Oh, I love it. Isabella already says advocating. Nadia says using a white cane. Me and every other mobility instructor is so stoked to hear that. Um, Keen says, having your hands clean in this day and age? Absolutely. Hannah says, money and checking skills. Liam is saying, plan ahead and research. Laura is saying, navigation. Laura, I use that exact word in my lesson plan. Again, we are in sync. Um, what, are, what are some other ideas? What do you think is the number one? Ooh, Connor says technology. Belinda, looking up the menu uh, ahead of time online. Yes, I like that idea. Erin, planning ahead. Yes, it seems like a lot of you know some good skills for going to a restaurant. Liam mentioned communication. Ricky Lynn says, knowing which category of restaurant it is. You got it, girl, that's a good one. Belinda also mentions being polite. 
These are some excellent predictions. And in fact, most of your predictions tie into my number one strategy for being successful at any type of restaurant. And that is being self-aware. What? Self-aware? Yes. You have to know yourself. And in fact, not just know, okay, this is my name. There are some specific things that you should know about yourself. And I'm going to give you some of my questions and I want you to just answer and think about it. If you want to answer out loud in the chat window, you can, or you can just make a mental picture. Teachers, I will be emailing this handout of these questions to everybody after class is over. But truly, the number one strategy for being successful at a restaurant is knowing a few important things about yourself. Now, I put this in a random order, but let me tell you, these, these are the things I want all of my students to know about yourself. Number one, can you manage a tray, your cane, water bottle, drinks, etc., gracefully? Gracefully. That's the question I want you to think of. Gracefully means when you walk across, you're not crashing and burning, dropping everything, slopping food all over the place. You can just move gracefully or semi-gracefully. So can you manage a tray, your cane, your drink, all of those things gracefully? If you're saying no, that's okay, because guess what? Now we know some things that you can practice at home. All right. The second thing I want you to know about yourself, know the limits to your vision. And this really applies for our students that have vision, but know the limits to your vision. Can you see a foot in front? Can you see large details? Can you see small details? Now, I'm not gonna lie, I've got a handful of low vision students that no matter what I show them, they can always see it because Sometimes it's hard to admit that you can't see something. Well, let me remind you, it's okay if you can't see something, but you need to be honest with yourself and with others, because if you keep lying and saying, I can see 10 feet in front of me, but baby, you can only see two, then your friends and your family, they'll forget and they'll go far away. It will also help you with giving directions to people, like meaning, hey, I want to sit somewhere and I know I need to sit under this light or just, just details about your vision. So know the limits to your vision. Know that if your friend group walks two feet away, you might not be able to see them anymore. And you have to remind those darn sighted people, you can't see, don't leave you hanging. Make sure that they know those things. So know your vision. And if you have no vision, then you already know where you're at. And there's some great strategies that we can use for you as well. Okay, so let's talk about the next thing. Now, the next thing I want you to know, or really do, is have something that I want to call a Batman utility belt. Does anybody know what I mean when I say a Batman utility belt? Can anybody tell me what that means? Okay, so some people say that they do. Who can give me that description in the chat window? What does it mean when I say have a Batman utility belt full of Plan B supports? Okay, Keen doesn't know, but Sanaya says yes. So I'm gonna explain it for everybody. Okay, Batman. He's a rad superhero, okay? He dresses usually all in black these days. Oh, Giselles. Giselles jumped in and says, have a lot of skills. Yes. So Batman, he's a man, typically, although let's face it, <laughs> Batwoman would be so much greater. Um, he has a belt, and this belt is called a utility belt. And Batman can do anything because he has this utility belt. Has he been dropped in hot lava? Doesn't matter. He presses a button on his belt, gets right out of it. He's got amazing things all strapped to this belt. So, students, 
you need to get your own Batman utility belt full of things I call plan B's. Does everybody know what a plan B is? Or a plan C, or a plan D, or a plan E, a plan F? That means if one thing doesn't work, yes, Keen, you've got another plan. Because let's be real, as a person with a vision impairment, you gotta have some plan Bs. You gotta have what are you gonna do when something doesn't work out? Because that's how life just goes. And really, if you don't have a vision impairment, you might realize that it's pretty true about life as well. So some things that I want you to keep in your plan B utility belt. Yes, Connor, another plan. Sanaya says a backup plan, yes. I want you to have apps on your phone that you can turn to, a flashlight, strategies, etc. You want to have a lot of things that you can turn to to help you in case you get in a jam. Because when you're going out to a restaurant with your parents, they're always going to watch out for you. But eventually, you're going to want to go on your own. So do you need a monocular? Do you need your phone? What are the things that you will need? So students, start creating that Batman utility belt full of plan Bs. What can you turn to in any situation that might be able to help you? All right. The next thing that I want you to remember and that you have to know about yourself for being successful in a restaurant is knowing different types of cane techniques. That is really important, knowing different types of cane techniques. So something called a pencil grip or just a standard grip. You need to know how can you use your cane to your advantage and also your disadvantage when you're in a congested area. And when I say congested, I mean a very popular area, lots of tables, chairs, etc. So if you're just walking like you normally do with your cane and it's extended in front of you through Applebee's where all their seating is, odds are one important thing is going to happen to you. That cane is going to get tangled over and over and over again underneath chairs, between people's legs, different things like that. It's crazy pants and it's super frustrating. So if you know about pencil grip, or another way that you can keep your cane closer to your body, that will help you. Because if you're a cane user, how frustrating is it for every six steps your cane gets tangled underneath something, or somebody trips over it, or kicks it, or steps on it? That happens in a restaurant, because it's such a congested area. So I'm not gonna give you a mobility lesson, but I am gonna tell you, if you are like, I don't know another way of holding my cane, you might be ready for an advanced lesson. So make sure you send an email, which is also using your expanded course skills, to your O&M instructor and say, help a sister out. I need to learn how to do this. Because as Paige mentions, it's very frustrating when your cane gets caught under something. Yes, it is. And not only that, it kind of starts to give the impression that you don't know how to use your cane, but you totally do. The problem is that there's like 500 chairs in the way. All right, so again, we're talking about the things that you need to know that you can use at any restaurant. One, you need to know how to manage your tray, your cane, water, all of those things gracefully. Remember, not just carrying it, it's all sloughing around off your tray and you look like a hot mess. So how can you do it gracefully? Second, Know the limits to your vision. What can you see and where can you see it? I can see my friends, but I can't see their facial expressions. Those are things that you need to know. Three, create that Batman utility belt full of plan B supports. Things that you can keep turning to to help you gracefully manage your way. Keen, what if you have no vision? Don't worry, we will answer that question in a hot second. Don't worry, I gotcha. Next, know different types of cane techniques. Pencil grip is my personal favorite for students when we're out in the community. Also, this is for all of my no vision and cane using students. When you go to a restaurant, true or false, 
It's okay to put your cane on the table. True or false? Hmm. Tell me in the chat window. Oh, I hope to see a whole bunch of falses coming through. I see it from Faith, Keen, Nadia, Josephina has all capital letters. Yes. Jennifer, I agree. False. Yuck. That's right, guys. Your cane never goes on a table in your home, at school, or in a restaurant because your cane has probably been in some really funky places and we don't want to bring that to the table. But now let me remind you of something. How frustrating is it though when you do have your cane folded and you put it on the floor and somebody kicks it and then you don't know where it went to? Hmm, has that ever happened to anyone before? Some of you might be using a cane holster, but if you're not, and you just have it on the floor and those sighted people aren't paying attention, they feel something under the table and what do they do? Kick your cane. Laura says it's very frustrating. Connor agrees. Keen said it's happened to him a few times. Well, here's a quick tip that you can do. When you put your cane on the floor, one, don't just put it on the floor anywhere. Put it underneath your foot. So your foot is always on your cane. You always have it. Yes, Sanaya stepping on it. Oh, great. Everybody's chiming in. Nadia knows it. Put your cane under your foot. This way, if somebody does feel it and tries to kick it, your foot is right there. And you can even have a little fun at the dinner table and say, to whoever is kicking my cane, I'm going to need my eyes later. So could you not kick it? Yeah, let them know. All right, guys. Great job. Okay. The next thing, and this is where teachers, you really need to kind of come in. So Lulu, I know the chat is moving fast. I'm sorry, there really is no way to slow it down. We have 226 people in class, but if you want, you can just jump in and chat. And you know what, if you need some help, Leanne or Charlotte, somebody can also be there to help. So Lulu, we're just doing our best. We'll, we'll reach out for you, okay? Okay. The next thing that you need to know about yourself, honest feedback about your eating skills. Did everybody hear me on this one? Students, I want each of you to go to your parents and ask for honest feedback about your eating skills and your utensil proficiency. That means you need to have a grown up in your life be honest do you look like a hot mess when you eat? It's true, you need to know that. If you are one of those young teenagers or younger students who puts their face down onto their plate and shovels your food in where your mouth is touching your plate, that is a total no-no. You can't do that. Graceful eating skills are important. So I like that Nadia, your mom already says you have good eating skills, perfect. You know what, ask your parents and then ask your teachers. And teachers, we're not doing our students any favors by not offering them kind but honest feedback. Because you know what, when a six-year-old eats kind of messy, uses their fingers, kind of does those things, we kind of let it slide. But let me tell you, if you're a 13 year old boy and you are eating like a caveman, ow, rah, 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 that's a no bueno situation. And let me tell you one thing about sighted people and our culture in the United States, poor eating skills is a social suicide, meaning a lot of people, they get turned off by it. They don't like those types of things. It's off putting. And so, Make sure you have honest feedback, which means somebody watches you eat, uses your utensils the correct way, and they're letting you know that. If you need help, you can turn to an occupational therapist. They can help you. Sometimes you just need to learn. So when sighted people eat, you know, they're really seating up, eating graceful. Um, now, should you ever use your fingers for non-finger foods? Please tell me in the chat window the right answer. Can you just use your, your fingers and take a big old hunk of spaghetti? 
Oh, thank goodness I see all of the no answers. But here's a, re a real situation. What do you do when you don't have good cutting skills and you're in a restaurant? We're gonna talk about that later. All right, the last thing I want you to remember to know about yourself are one, how to use your canes, your utensils, as mini canes. Did she just say mini canes? I did. I want you to use your utensils like you use your cane. So if you don't know where all of your food is located on your plate in a restaurant, don't put your face in your plate. Did everybody hear me? Don't put your face in your plate. Use your utensil to feel around just like you use your cane to detect different levels in the ground. So Connor has already shared something in the chat and I'm gonna have him share it again later because he's learned this lesson and practiced it very well out into the community about getting help with cutting. Now Keen is saying this is common sense. Well baby, common sense, not common. I can tell you a lot of people don't know these things. Okay, and then the last thing you need to know about yourself are good money interaction skills. You really need to know how to pay, how to retrieve your money. You can't be fumbling all of your money when you're trying to do different things. You really need to know how to handle your money in all situations. Does everybody get me on that one? You need to know that. And that's stuff that you can work on with your teachers. And if your parents are like, I don't ever give you money, tell them, give me some money, let me pay on my own. Okay, Keen says, what if you're a fast eater? Well, Keen, food is meant to be enjoyed. So let it digest, take a bite, talk with somebody. There's no race, it's all good. Okay, so for the remainder of our class, what we are going to do is talk about specific things to our restaurant. Specific things to our restaurant. So one, I just wanna remind everybody that the number one strategy for being successful in a restaurant is knowing things about yourself knowing things about yourself. We just ran through all of those questions, so I won't run through them again, but I want you to remember that you need to know about them. Now, the next thing that we're gonna talk about are the types of restaurants. Types of restaurants and specific skills that we need. All right, so here we go. Let's talk about casual dining, family style, or full service restaurants, okay? So these types of restaurants are gonna be Olive Garden, Texas Roadhouse, Red Robin, those are all types of casual dining, family style, or full service restaurants. Now, let's talk about the menu. The menu is available online, or they have a paper menu. I know some of you are already asking about a Braille menu, and I'm gonna be really honest with you, most Braille menus, are out of date. You know, it's nice when somebody brings over a Braille menu, but usually their Braille menu isn't up to date with their current menu. So as much as I totally and fully support Braille instruction, it might not be the number one thing in a restaurant. So make sure you can access it online or paper. And Connor is already saying, has anybody ever seen a Braille menu at a restaurant? That's no little one sheet of paper. Somebody has just handed you a box full of things. So it's kind of frustrating and, it, and it's usually out of date. So the menu is, oh, Justin, good point. Many are not even in UEB. In fact, it could be the first Braille menu that they made and it's probably full of errors. Um, so your menu is available online or paper. Okay. So there are four tips I have for accessing a menu that you could do at almost any type of restaurant. So we're just gonna talk about accessing the menu once, but you could use these at all different types of restaurants. Number one, and a lot of people mentioned it, read the menu ahead of time. Look at it before you go to the restaurant and get an idea of what you want. This is a very popular suggestion. Number two, use an app or any kind of assistive technology. So you can call up the app on your phone. You could use a Braille note. 
You can use the CNAI app, as a lot of people are saying. Yeah, so you can use an app, you can use assistive technology to access the menu, okay? So number one, read that menu ahead of time. Number two, use an iPad, use an app, use assistive technology. Number three, ask for a live read. This means you're gonna ask somebody to read the menu. But everybody pay attention to this one cardinal rule about asking for a live read because a lot of well-meaning sighted people make the same mistake with live reads. Does anybody know what it is? They read the whole menu to you and you don't wanna know about any of those things. They read the whole menu. So when you're gonna do a live read, meaning you wanna know on the menu about something, don't just look to a sighted friend or family member and say, would you please read the menu to me? Because that's gonna take a long time. What you're gonna do is say, I'm interested in, do they have chicken dishes? Would you please read the chicken dishes? Because most menus are organized by the meat or by a different, you know, by a, a type. So ask, hey, what are the chicken dishes? Can you tell me what kind of cheeseburgers this restaurant offers? Don't ask them to read the whole menu. And vice versa, teachers, parents, don't read the whole menu. If a student asks you to read it to them, ask them, what do you wanna know about? They've got sandwiches, they've got entrees. What part of the menu do you want me to read to you? You're saving everybody some unnecessary time loss. Does everybody understand that? All right, thank you, Lulu. I appreciate you sharing it. Hannah is also mentioning that use of assistive technology with taking a picture and then just enlarging it. All great ways of using um, technology. So number one, read ahead. Number two, use an app or assistive technology. Number three, do a live read. Number four is the server. Ooh, the server. Because servers at restaurants like Olive Garden, Red Robin, Texas Roadhouse, they are required to memorize the whole menu. That's right. They have to know everything that's on the menu. So sometimes when the server comes up to the table, you can just say, hey, what are the cheeseburger choices that you have here? And they'll just tell you everything that's on the menu. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, works like a charm. And it keeps the pace of your conversation. It doesn't get broken up. Because honestly, I see Keen who's asked, will there be a Braille menu? Usually if you ask again for that Braille menu, it's going to take the server to go ask a manager. The manager is going to have to go in the back of the store going, oh my gosh, I don't know where a Braille menu is. And now you've lost all of this time when you could have just done any of those four choices. So those are your tips for accessing menus. And you can use those menus in casual dining. You can use that in fast casual. And we'll talk a little bit more about fast food. But those are tried and true skills that will help you anywhere. All right, so any questions about the four strategies for accessing the menu? Again, I love Braille, but a Braille menu is not one of my four strategies. Read ahead, use an app or assistive technology, ask for a live read, but not the whole menu, or ask the server. Servers have to know the whole menu. Okay, now what about navigation at a restaurant like Texas Roadhouse? Navigation, what can you do? What, what do a lot of you do? If you go to a place like Olive Garden, Red Robin, Texas Roadhouse, what do you do when you go there? How do you find your seat? Tell me in the chat window. Tell me in the chat window what you do. So Paul is already saying, know your ADA laws and rights. That's true. It might not be your number one thing that you can go with. What, how do you guys normally do it? So Hannah follows her parents. Laura has her mom that usually guides. Um, I'll wait for some other ideas. Um, tell me in the chat window. A lot of people use their parents. And, you know, one thing that I always mention to parents and some teachers is if it's an unfamiliar environment, meaning an environment you've never been to before, 
I think it's unrealistic to ask a totally blind person to just figure it out when there's all kinds of crazy things there. So there are a few things that you can do that still helps work out. So uh, first thing first. So for navigation, one, consider ways that you can navigate the restaurant gracefully. And you might want to talk with your O&M instructor about this. Again, you don't want to be what's called a bull in a china shop, meaning you're just charging through and I'm bumping into people. If that is your approach in a restaurant, we need to chat. You can't do that. It's really off-putting to people. Of course, I know it's frustrating for you because you're just trying to get to your table, but really that approach doesn't work. So if you bump into something from time to time, hey, that's a life of a blind person. But when you just come charging through the restaurant, bumping into anybody, if you can hear my voice when you're walking doing that, no bueno, no bueno. So what you can do is just walk through. Guide is a great technique. It's really great. Your cane is your friend. So everybody use your cane. Remember we talked a lot about pencil grip. That's a great one. But if you're gonna do sighted guide, can I just say one thing? When you go into sighted guide, that is not your cue to just tune out and not pay attention, okay? If you're being guided by somebody, you have an active role. So I usually have my students still keep their canes out with them because what happens if we need to separate quickly or do something, okay? But I also need you to get a, a feel for what we're walking through. So if you just tune out and let me guide you, that's a no bueno situation. So I like Keen's question. He says, sometimes I walk into people in the queue or in the line, how will I know when someone will, will move? And so sometimes that's when you're just, you just say, excuse me. If you've accidentally bumped into somebody, say, excuse me. But that's another reason why having your cane still visible is very helpful. Um, if you have low vision and you don't use a cane, stay close to the people you're with. If you're not with your family and you're with friends, remind your friends, hey guys, we're going into Red Robin. Remember, I can't see what they're talking about. Hook a brother up and tell them, okay? I like this. Mary Noel says, going sighted guide is like being a passenger in a car, no idea of where you're really going. And that is the exact reason why you have to be proactive. Because what happens when that, when that sighted person, and I'm just going to say sighted, has to walk away from you very quickly and you're just standing there. Now you're thinking, great, what am I going to do now? So be an active participant, okay? A few other things that will help you with navigation. Has anybody ever heard of the phrase, and this is more for my low vision friends, systematic search patterns, systematic search patterns. If you are low vision and you've heard of that phrase, will you let me know in the chat window? It's much easier with so many people on than to have people raising their hands. So Laura hasn't. Has anybody heard of vantage points? Have you heard of vantage points or systematic search patterns? Tell me if you know any about any of those. Okay, so Laura is the only one who's told me about it. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, so Nadia has heard about it. Um, again, this is something I want you to turn to your O&M instructor about. A systematic search pattern is a way of looking at things. So instead of just looking at everything like, oh, 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 I'm looking at everything, you start at one point and you scan over in a systematic way. It helps you to see things much easier. A vantage point is the point where you can stand somewhere and see a lot of things. You know, it's a good place. Again, it's your vantage, like advantage. Okay, Lulu, I see your question. She says, how about if you're in line at a restaurant and it happens that you just zoned out so you don't know when to move up or when the line moves up? Lulu, we will talk about that when we get to fast food. And so I will make sure that we answer your question. So tips for navigation. Consider ways that you can navigate the restaurant gracefully. This is a great place to turn to your O&M instructor and ask them, practice with a parent, but you need to be proactive about what you need. 
And I don't know about you, but I've seen a number of sighted people not know how to do proper sighted guide technique correctly. And they end up taking your arm, to which I always laugh and say, I thought you were guiding them, but you're both in it together. Okay, no, use your cane. No, oh, this is the last one, sorry. Know your seating choices. Again, this goes into you being an active participant. Don't just show up at the restaurant and have your parents tell you where to go. Know what kind of seating choices. So at casual dining restaurants, it's a booth, a bar, or a table with chairs. Those are the usual standard types of seating options. So ask your parents before you set out to follow the server or the hostess, say, hey, are we going to sit in a booth? Are we going to sit in a table? Where are we going? Ask that question. Okay, now tips for organization and ordering in a casual dining or full service restaurant. And this is a little bit going back to what Connor was talking about or what I highlighted with Connor. Request things pre-cut if your cutting skills aren't awesome. Let me repeat that. You can request items like steak, chicken to be pre-cut if your cutting skills are not awesome or it's difficult for you to do cutting gracefully. Meaning you've ordered a steak, you want to eat it, instead of trying to figure it out and tearing apart your steak on your plate by trying to cut it, when you order it, you can just tell the server, will you please have this cut before you bring it out to me, okay? And Connor says, yes, especially on a date. Again, social suicide is when you are a hot mess with your eating and culinary skills. So, and I'm just gonna use Connor because we've used this a lot, and I'm just gonna say Connor is a teenager, he has no vision, and sometimes cutting skills are not his friend when we're out in public. And so what he's done several times successfully is he's just said to the person, to the server, I'm gonna order this chicken, but will you have it cut up for me when you bring it out? Now, every once in a while you have a server that's like, huh, what? But most servers catch on quickly. The key is that you speak clearly. Okay, don't mumble it, make your order. I would like to order the steak, the baked potato, and the mashed potatoes. Ooh, I love carbs. But then say to the server right away, clearly and directly, please cut up my steak before bringing it out. It's a real tip and it can save you a lot of embarrassment. A lot of people I've noticed that don't have good cutting skills order the same types of foods cheeseburgers, chicken fingers, pizza, easy things that you can just pick up and eat. You can't dodge the good food for forever. If your family goes to Olive Garden, there's nothing that you can just pick up and eat other than the breadstick meatball sandwich. So learn these skills. Any of these things, you can just say to the server, will you have it cut before you bring it out? And they'll do it easily, no extra charge. And remember, use your utensils as your ally. Ally means friend. No fingers in your food. So pick up your fork, hold it just like you hold your cane, and poke around to get an idea of what you need. But never put fingers in your food. All right, so those are our tips for eating at a casual dining, family style, or full service restaurant. We talked about how to access the menu, navigation, and tips for organization. Now in our remaining time, we're gonna move on to fast food. Now with fast food, the menu is available in about three to four ways, okay? Online, a kiosk, which is that screen thing that doesn't talk and has no accessibility and you'll see lots of people trying to figure out how to use it. So online, a kiosk, an app, okay? Like for example, I have my Chick-fil-A app. Um, and I can order my food right from Chick-fil-A and have it ready to go when I show up. Or the counter, which is the traditional waiting in line, going up to the counter. So those are the four ways that menus are available in a fast food and usually a fast casual restaurant. So you have lots of ways to be able to access the menu. Again, live reader, text skills, etc. Now, 
And Keen, I will circle back to you in just a hot second. Now, if you are ordering at the counter, I want you to remember this one important tip. And this is really for my kiddos who have no vision or very, very low vision. When you order, ask the person where you should stand and to put the money directly into your hand, okay? Okay, I'm at Chick-fil-A, I wanna order a, reg a regular original chicken sandwich and their frosted lemonades because they're delicious. Now, when I finish, okay, ask where you should go. Or actually at Chick-fil-A, you go sit down. Maybe we'll use McDonald's. What would I order at McDonald's? Nuggets? Doesn't matter. When you're at the counter, say, now, should I move to my left or to my right? Now, it's important that you speak clearly and directly to the person. Because, of course, they're not going to catch on that you're blind. And when you say that you're blind, most likely they're going to think that you're deaf and they're going to start talking louder to you. Okay? So, when you order, one, please put the money directly into my hands if you're using cash because otherwise they'll just be holding the money up in front of you and there's nothing more awkward than you wondering where the money has gone, okay? So tell them to put the money directly into your hand and you hold your hand out. Two, where should you stand to wait for your order? So you say, should I move to my left or to my right? Your right or left, okay? Next, know your order number. So if they're gonna tell you, oh, they're, gonna, they're just gonna call your order number, Give them your receipt back and say, what's my order number? You need to know that you have to take that kind of assertiveness. Those are the things that you need to know. Now, tips for organization. Consider your skills again with managing that tray, the cane, and your food. If they're just going to hand you a whole bunch of drinks and everything loose at a fast food restaurant, ask if they have a tray. Most places have a tray. If it's a water bottle, tip it down. Put it right under your thumb on both sides and carry it, okay? Know how to manage your tray. This is a great skill for you to practice with your friends, teachers, or mobility instructors. Okay, now if you're ordering at the counter and you have a friend with you, make sure that the person is speaking directly to you. Because I know if I go out with any of my students and I stand right next to them, I'll say Connor because he's one of my students. If I'm standing next to Connor and we're at McDonald's, Guess who the person is that they're usually going to talk to? Yeah, me. They usually don't look at Connor. They will look at me. So it's very important that Connor, and I'll just keep using him as an example, when he feels that, you say, talk to me. Oh, Connor, yep, are you saying my name? Do you have a question? If you do, go ahead and type it. I'll keep talking, but I'll wait for it. So make sure that they know that you are talking to you. Now, be graceful, um, but this is your chance to show that you are a capable person, that you don't need them to talk to your friend or your parent because they're sighted. Okay, make sure you speak for yourself. Now, ask clarifying questions when you're unsure. Like a classic example is, you need to know how to advance into the line and they say next and they say to you, you, do you want it? That's when you say, are you talking to me? And point to yourself. That's asking a clarifying question, okay? And then make sure you work with your mobility instructor on how to advance in the line. You can't zone out. Know how to advance in the line. So Hannah, who also is one of my students, said capable young adult. Because that phrase is something that all of my students hear all the time if they're a teenager, because that is exactly how I treat them as capable young adults. So I'm going to assume that they have the skills and that they can do it. It's great because it raises the expectation and they all do it amazingly. Okay, I just want to quickly review tips for organization at a fast food restaurant. Know your skills with managing your tray, your cane, et cetera. Know where you want to sit, how you're going to get there. Remember, there's more than one type of sighted guide. Does everybody know that? That there's traditional sighted guide where you hold at the elbow. But if you were carrying a tray and your friend was carrying a tray, you really can't walk holding at an elbow. So does anybody know what's another way you can do guide work? that doesn't involve holding at the elbow. Does anybody know? 
I'm going to look in the chat window. Does anybody know another way? Shoulder, you could do that. Hold at the wrist, shoulder. Yeah, but what if you're both holding trays of food? So holding at the shoulder definitely is an idea. I'm going to wait and see if I see anything come up in the chat window other than the shoulder or the wrist. Walking beside each other, touching elbows. Okay, talking, yes, definitely. What about forearm to forearm? You're, hold, you're both holding the trays and you're saying forearm to forearm or constant contact so that you always know where to go. Constant contact. Okay, perfect. Know how to advance in the line. Now with fast casual, with fast casual, I just have a few things that I want to share and then I'm going to answer some questions and then we're out of time. Um, the menu is very similar to regular fast food app, online, counter, etc. But here's what I want you to know. If you're going to a restaurant like Subway or Chipotle or maybe even a Panera where they've got a glass window section, be clear and direct that you are blind. Blindness is not a bad word to say, but people don't catch it right away why you don't know what to order. So just say, I can't see it. So be clear and direct. You don't have to yell. Don't be a hero. Don't be crazy advocate person. People just don't know. So just be clear and direct. Hi, I'd like to order, but I can't see what you have. So can you offer the choices to me? That's all you need to say, but hold it on your own. Do your homework. That will also help. A little recon helps reduce anxiety every time. So if you're going to Chipotle, learn what's going on. Don't wait to the window and say, holy Hannah, I don't know what to do. Before you're approaching, ask your friends, ask your family, what are the choices? Know what you want before you get there. That will help out. Okay, before we end, I'm just gonna circle back to some questions. I'm gonna go up the chat window and I'm gonna find Keen's question. He says, if I am eating hot wings with sauce, you can't use your fork, then should I keep napkins nearby or what should I do? Well, Keen, that is an excellent question as hot wings are delicious. I'm gonna ask everybody to weigh in in the chat window. What do you think you should do? Keen's thought is, I should keep napkins nearby. Is anybody gonna try to use a fork to eat hot wings? No, because if you started trying to use a fork with hot wings at Buffalo Wild Wings and everybody else is slopping it around, again, people are gonna be like, yo, why is that person, you know? It's like the person who cuts up a candy bar with a fork and knife. It might be cool in some places, but I generally don't know why you're doing it. So if it's a messy food like wings, that's acceptable. Remember, what's the big picture? So Keen, you're right. Keep lots of napkins nearby. In fact, places like Buffalo Wild Wings will even give you wet wipes to help you out. The difference is that when you're eating buffalo wings at a Buffalo at, at Wild Wings or something like that, Everybody's gonna be picking it up using their hands. Everybody's gonna get messy, right? But if you're at, I don't know, Olive Garden and you're flinging pasta all over the table, nobody else is probably doing that, okay? I know when I order my ribs at Texas Roadhouse, guess what they give me? Wet wipes, because ribs were meant to be eaten and destroyed and loved and I do it so well. All right, we've got just another minute. Does anybody else have any other questions? Any other questions? All right, I don't see anything coming through on the chat window. I've had a great time with everybody. All of the tips that I have shared, I will make into a handout. I already have it ready. I will email it to you so that you can recap all of those things. The best thing right now, students, get some honest feedback. How do you eat? What are your skills? Reach out to your mobility instructors. You can make a restaurant in your own house. Rearrange the table and chairs and practice walking through them. There's so many things that you can do. And if you want some more ideas, of course, you're always welcome students and teachers to follow me at Nine More Than Core on Instagram because I'm always sharing these types of things and it's super fun. Okay, everybody, that was great.
I'll see you another time. Thank you, Robin. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. And just like the other day, I'm starving now. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could just go and sit down at Olive Garden. I sure miss going to restaurants and having one serve me some food. <laughs> but we've got great takeout. So you know what? I think I might order some pizza. Is anyone else going to have lunch in a few minutes or maybe dinner? I want to know what you're going to eat. While we get ready for tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to have time for talks. So if you are with us and you are free, we would love to have you. Some of our older friends who are joining us today, it may not be for you, but you're always welcome to be there. On the other hand, if you know any preschoolers, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, they are absolutely welcome and will love it. So we would love to have them. TVI, if you have any little guys, send the message their way and maybe their families would like to join us. So we hope to see you tomorrow. And we were going to just say bye for now. Thank you again, Robin. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank see you, Robin. Later. Thank you, bye, Robin. Everyone.